joining us, we're going to be talking about Caesarean section and Hebrew women. And Hebrew women. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, over to you, Anome. So, what do you want to do? Um, okay, so please, can you tell us um, what a Caesarean section is? What people normally call CS, please? Okay, Lota, I would have allowed you to answer this question, but let me try. Okay. You want to do it? Let me try. Okay, yes. Okay. So, a Caesarean section, right? Mm -hmm. Now, this is a procedure done on the anterior abdominal wall. Sorry. Or the belly, right? Thank you. So, there's going to be an incision. Or a. Yeah. What's an incision? So, like a cut. Thank you. Right? Mm -hmm. So that your baby can come out freely. Do you understand? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, so it's well, in summary, yeah. In summary, in summary, it is a surgical procedure done on the anterior abdominal wall, aka tummy. Mm -hmm. Yes, so that your baby can come out. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I think that 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 explains it plainly, plainly yeah. enough. Yeah. I hope. Yes. Yeah. So what questions do you have for me now? Hmm. Okay. So um, can you please tell us? The other options we have for delivery. Mm. Yes, like, do you know, I particularly like this question because it's important to know that a cesarean section is one option of delivery. It is a normal form of delivery. Yeah, it is. Same as a vaginal delivery, which we'll call a spontaneous vaginal delivery. Yeah. Exactly. So it's one of those options. Yeah. There are other delivery options like epidurals and all that and i think it's important for us to note that these are all normal deliveries, deliveries. thank yeah. you yeah. thank you so options but when it comes to how the baby is taken out of the stomach or taken out of the uterus or the womb mm. it's i think i think we can just leave it at a cesarean section yeah. and a vaginal delivery exactly yes. exactly yes. okay so um <clears throat> so we have um, lots of patients coming and then they say they want to deliver like the Hebrew women. So we're going to be talking about this. Now, we want to educate you people, right? Yes, about this whole Hebrew women thing. And then why that we doctors actually choose the caesarean section. So well, do we sure. do we really do we really choose the cesarean okay. section? No, no, no. Or we give them the option yeah. to choose. Exactly. Or would, doctors will usually tell you, to be honest, I think the best thing for this delivery is a cesarean section. Options or reasons why indications for cesarean section. Who tell you that? Why? Yeah. Why the doctor might ask you to do a cesarean section include? If your baby is big, which we call what they call it again? Mm. Medical. Thing. Macrosomia. Exactly. Yeah, like I actually had to think of that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes. Okay, so guys, so usually, right, um, the first option is okay, keep it through the vagina, right? Yeah. But all then, things being equal. All things being equal. But then, that's why, first of all, yes, I think that we should talk about an antenatal. Okay, okay. And, yes. So, First of all, you're supposed to register for your antenatal care so that in that process, you can actually attend scanning. Yeah, so we do this scan, right? So that we can find out what is going on in there. We can look at your baby to find out if your baby is big, how your baby is presenting, whether... Position. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So can you please also tell us something about the anti? Need our um, care and all that. Okay, so I think that care is very important. Apart from the fact that you have you go in for scans, right? Even from examination, so even by the doctor checking you, sometimes there might be indications that your baby is not positioned correctly, for example. Yeah. Or sometimes it's even so obvious to the doctor or to the trained eye that your belly is looking a bit too big. There might be something going on in there, you know. So those are, and then of course, if you go in for antenatal care. And the doctor sees that you've had a previous cesarean section. My, that is usually an indication for another cesarean section. Some hospitals or some practices or some doctors will say, oh, I can allow you try a vaginal birth after one cesarean section. And if it doesn't work. 
then you will go forward to do another cesarean section but a lot of people and then and then if you would say if you've had two previous cesarean sections so if you had two cesarean sections before this pregnancy you're definitely doing a cs so yeah. the difference here is some people will say once you've had one cs the cs yeah some people will say okay let's wait for two if you've had two then you continue with their sections mm -hmm. and another thing that a lot of people like another thing that would usually be advocated for is also um, once you've had three cesarean sections you should stop yeah. but i think that that's really it's really left to individual judgments and practices yeah. Yeah. at the end yeah. but just so you know having a previous cesarean section might be an indication or be a reason why your doctor will ask you to do another cesarean section or if your baby is big or your baby is big or you're you small or you have a problem with your pelvis Maybe also it's you, small and then you won't let the baby pass yes yeah, so they will actually need like a bigger space so that's why your doctor will tell you that okay hey please you may have to go for a cs yeah yeah what other indications? sometimes okay yeah, yeah there's breach yeah so if your baby is coming out if your baby is positioned with its bum palm yeah. facing downwards Normally, sorry, so yeah. normally it's actually supposed to be the head, the head yeah. coming out. But during scan, if we see that your baby is not co is not presenting with the head, then you may actually go in for a CS, right? Yeah, so yeah, so bridge starts with the bone and yeah. then foot link and exactly. then with their feet or yeah. hands. Any other yeah. thing apart from the head essentially yeah. might be an indication or it's usually an indication for a cesarean section yeah. then we also have some problems with the placenta so yeah. sometimes the placenta well is there any other name for the placenta mm, no yeah so be cord maybe not the cord no the placenta, the placenta just know that the, there's the cord, that cord that connects the baby and the mother yes yes so the cord connects to the placenta the placenta connects to the wall of the womb of the yeah. womb yeah. so the placenta sometimes might cover the cervix or that the neck of the womb that and space where the baby is supposed to, to pass out. through exactly and so that's called placenta previa so and, and some issues with the placenta like that might be indications for a cesarean section also multiple gestations yes that's not in certain, absolute thing. exactly yeah in certain situations especially if sometimes it's if the first child is the leading twin so if the twin is going to come out first is coming out with anything apart from the head yeah it's probably going to be a cesarean section exactly so, and, and then of course sometimes some people go into labor and are just not progressive exactly. it's called failure to progress and that's another indication or another reason why your doctor will say so it seems like we're going to have to need a do a cesarean section yes so, so please a cs is it is okay for you to have a cs but then i think we should talk about this the, hebrew Women yeah. thing. I've had lots of patients come in and then their husbands or maybe they themselves they themselves say, Oh doctor, please I can't go in for ECS. I don't want to enter the theater. I, I, I want to stories, give birth. Actually. Okay. I have multiple stories. I remember like there was this woman that came in and interestingly she didn't come in, in label, like she came in for a scan and I happened to be in the ultrasound room and this woman had been trying to have babies for a while like four years and she finally was pregnant and she was now close to delivery time and I th there was just a strong indication like there was a strong indication for her to do this nursing i don't remember what the indication was yeah. but i just remember telling remember like somebody saying ah Madam, you know this means it's a CSO. And she was like, no. I'm, and she was so adamant. I'm not going to have a cesarean section. Interestingly, another doctor walked into the ultrasound room. Mm -hmm. And and then we showed him whatever the thing. She was showed him something. And he said, ah, that means it's a CS now. And she was still adamant. So you've gotten one opinion. The second opinion. I mean, multiple opinions. I mean. And she was just like, nah, I'm not going to do an ultrasound scan. I mean, I'm not going to do a cesarean section. Yeah. But the interesting thing is that there are even worse stories. Like, this is even somebody that you know, we're trying to convince. But there's this story of, or there are many women. A lot, they love doing this thing. <laughs> or we love doing this thing because we're women, right? Yeah. So, like, they tell you, madam, you're going to need a cesarean section. On, you're, you're going to need a cesarean section before you go into labor. So, maybe at 38 weeks, right? Yeah. So, they'll, they'll book them for a cesarean section. This woman, okay, let, let me say, this particular woman was booked for a cesarean section on the 30, at 38 weeks. Yeah, that's true. Okay. And she, 
stay because this is many people do this so they will stay at home till they start going to labor hoping that by the time they come to the hospital they will just give, they will birth. Just give birth sad story though this woman did the same thing and i believe she tried to give birth at home by the time she came to the hospital she was bleeding profusely wow, and they checked and what had happened was that her womb or her uterus don't, no, no, don't see that. I'm serious. No, 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 no. Her uterus it's ruptured. had ruptured. Oh my god. So the oh baby so like oh literally like the womb, like the like let's say it's a balloon, it it tore. The baby comes out of the womb and usually it means the baby is dead. So the baby died and the only way to take out this baby now is to cut open the anterior abdominal wall so that means that she still had to go in for a something like a cs exactly <sighs> so she still had to go in cut and um, the, the something was cut open her stomach was cut open baby was taken out but now the dead baby and so she went through she went she went through the surgical procedure for avoiding she lost the baby at that's term, that's a full-grown baby and sad. this is simply because she wanted to give birth like the hebrew women so now, but let's even address the Hebrew women from a biblical point of view, right? Yeah. I like to talk about this thing, like, since I found out about it, I'm Alome. like, hey. And Alome is about preaching. Guys, <laughs> get your Bible. Get so, your Bible. yes, if you know your Bible, the Hebrew women thing is from Exodus chapter 1. Are you guys there? 1, If you're there, say amen. amen. <laughs> and this is how it goes. Basically, let's stop playing around. Yeah. And they said to Pharaoh, because yeah. the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women, for they are strong and the birth takes place before we come to them. I think this this is a it's a wonderful piece of scripture and it's something that we can hold on to in faith, right? Yeah. But what yeah. I do not like about this, this scripture is the fact that we ignore what happens in Exodus 1, chapter 15 to 18. Let me break it down. <laughs> So, Pharaoh was intimidated by the Hebrews, clearly. Yeah. And so what he did was, he told the midwives who would attend to the Hebrew women, because he didn't want the Hebrew males to, he didn't want the population to grow, and he didn't, he didn't need that competition. Mm -hmm. So he told the midwives to kill every, every male child born to the Hebrew women while they were taking the deliveries, right? Mm -hmm. But the scripture says, the, um, the midwives feared God. And because they feared God, they attended to these deliveries, but did not kill the boys. Yeah. So by the time Pharaoh called them back to say, my people, <laughs> why are there still Hebrew? living Hebrew boys? Hanging around. Hanging around the area. <laughs> they had to lie. And they said, unto Pharaoh, because the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women, for they are strong and the birth takes place before we get there. Knowing fully well that they took those deliveries. Yeah. But it's like, we intervene though, but we can't tell you because we have to save our heads. Exactly. So basically, please, deliver like the Hebrew women, actually. Yeah. Which means deliver with as much intervention as is required. Because your doctor will only or most likely, in most cases advocate for you to do a cesarean section or any other procedure knowing fully well that it is the best for you yeah and then 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 then, then, then. <laughs> another important thing to remember is that every pregnancy is different so the fact that you delivered your first child normally i hate the word normally vaginally doesn't mean that the second child can delivered vaginally it. do you understand so yeah. it's left for the experts to anticipate and tell you so we, uh, we see that there might be problems from this point forward. Our best bet is to prevent those problems by like doing this section. Yeah. So yes, that's, I think that's, that's where yeah. I'll end with that. Okay, so um, just to just add to what she said, um, I think that if every um, pregnant um, lady, mm -hmm. in fact, once you confirm, I think you should register for antenatal it's very important guys yeah. i mean and then another thing is this once you're of the age like we probably child very yes, age please start age. start thinking what child very age. age from what age well well child very well age. well sister yes so let's say like um, 18 yeah well child very age is actually 15 
Ooh. Yeah. Okay. So like um, we went up reproductive age, I think it's about 15, 15 upwards. I don't know where it ends. So maybe I think around 15 to 45. I'm not sure, don't quote me, but I'm sure it's 15. Yeah. Okay. okay. So so I think I'm maybe 15 to 35, 15 to 35, something like that. Okay. But essentially, because of our culture, they say like you you don't want to start telling somebody at 15 to start taking for the car seat. I would though. Oh, really? but I would. You, wait, I, I would. It. You would tell your daughter to take folic acid at the age of fifteen, and I mean. Yes, she, she's menstruating. She's losing folic acid. She is losing fertility. Okay. Okay. She well, needs folic acid. Well, she's using it. Well, well, so well. there's no reason why she shouldn't take it. You get? Did you take? No, no, I didn't. <laughs> because of our culture, my mother is not like me, but I'm different. <laughs> So like I wouldn't mind to be honest. Like the thing is, when it comes to reproduction and when it comes to all those things, we like yeah. to just dodge the lower, younger mm. ones because yes, but mm. it's advisable anyway. Once you are childbearing age, or once yeah. you think that you're ready to, you want to start trying with children. Exactly. Take your body acid. Why is that so? Could you please um, tell us why? Is that so? <sighs> <laughs> okay, folic acid is important because yeah, so it's kind of used for blood formation. But importantly, during pregnancy. The early stages of pregnancy, it's important that the woman or that the mother has a reserve of folic acid because it helps, it is used by the body to form certain parts of the baby, the brain. especially the brain, mm -hmm. the spinal mm -hmm. cord. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times when there's a, if there is a folic acid deficiency, those children might have defects of the brain or def defects of the spine. Exactly. So that's why it's important. And it's important, this happens... Sometimes, like these parts are formed even before, sometimes even before you realize you're pregnant. Exactly. So it's important to stock up on your folic acid. I start taking it early. Yeah, before you get pregnant. Exactly. Yeah, so I think that that's important advice. Well done. Yeah. Thumbs up. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you, Onome. Like, I mean, you've been an amazing guest. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, guys. Thank you so much. If for you have me. any questions for Luta, please drop the questions. I'm sure she can yeah. Yeah. Please do. Yeah.